So in the previous lectures, we established the uh, combinatorial and, and topological framework for sequence spaces. And, and we also saw that in, in the case of closed sets, those uh, uh, frameworks are, are uh, closely re related. What we want to do next is, uh, since we also want to deal with the probabilistic framework of setting, um, we have to uh, uh, develop a measure on sequence spaces. Uh, what I want to do first uh, is uh, to uh, briefly go over the basics of measure theory and measure spaces. So if you have already uh, taken a class in measure theory or you've uh, studied measure theory um, otherwise, uh, you can probably go ahead and, and skip this lecture or go through it uh, rather quickly. So let's start with the basic definition of a measure space. Uh, a measure space is a triple uh, consisting of a set X, a sigma algebra A, and usually uh, denoted script A, and a measure mu. Well, let's go over those two uh, components here besides the set X, the sigma algebra and the measure. Uh, what is a sigma algebra? A sigma algebra is a certain family of subsets. So um, these, uh, the sigma algebra A is made up uh, of subsets of X. And these subsets, subsets had, have to uh, satisfy certain requirements. So first we have that the empty set and the whole set itself must be in the um, uh, sigma algebra. This is a little bit redundant. Uh, if you if you look at the second condition, namely that um, if a set A is in the sigma algebra, then uh, its complement in X is also in there. So in particular, if zero is in the uh, uh, sigma algebra, then X, which is the complement of, of zero in X, uh, must also be in there. Uh, and and, and uh, likewise, if X is in there, then the empty set must be in there. So it would be enough to just require here that uh, one of the two sets is in there and require this. So again, here we have closure under uh, complements. And then the third requirement is the closure under countable unions, which means that if we have a sequence of sets AI, each of these uh, sets AI is in the sigma algebra, um, and it's a countable sequence, then the union of the AI is also in A. So again, this is called closure under countable union. One of the most important uh, sigma algebras, um, and the sigma algebra we will uh, work with in this course, is the sigma algebra of the Borel sets. Um, one way to define the Borel sets are, is to say it's the smallest sigma algebra containing all open sets. So. The Borel sets, uh, in order to, to get Borel sets, you have to work with the topology. So you have to have a topology. So you have to have open sets. And then um, you take the smallest sigma algebra that contains all open sets. And um, you can also say this is the sigma algebra generated by the open sets. So there are, um, those, those two things here are kind of dual views. So here you say it's the smallest sigma algebra containing the open sets. So you can, one way to, to arrive at the Borel sets is to say, okay, I'll take all the sigma algebras uh, that contain the open sets and providing there exists. And then you just take the, the, uh, the intersection of them and you arrive and you can show that this is again a sigma algebra and you arrive at the Borel sets. The other way is to kind of go from from the bottom uh, up and, and say, well, uh, we can actually generate them. And uh, how, how exactly are they generated? How do we generate the Borel sigma algebra starting from the open sets? Well, the open sets have to be in there. Well, that's, that's just the, the condition. It has to contain all open sets. So, well, if we want to build a sigma algebra containing all open sets, we better put them in there. So we start with the open sets, put them into the sigma algebra. Well, if the open sets are in the sigma algebra by the second condition on the previous slide, well, it must be closed under complements. Well, 
that means we have to put the closed sets in there too, right? Because the closed sets are precisely the, the complements of the open sets. So we, for in the first step, we put in the open sets. In the second step, we put in the closed sets because they're the complement of, complements of the open sets. And then we know that uh, we must be closed under countable unions. That means countable unions of closed sets must also be in the sigma algebra. Countable unions of closed sets are not necessarily closed anymore, nor are they necessarily open, so it's a different kind of set. So those we have to put in too. And now you see how we, we step by step put in more and more complicated sets. So if we think of the open sets as the, the most simple set, and the, and the closed sets too, because they're just the complements here. In the next step here, we put in something more more complicated, namely countable unions of closed sets. And uh, and now we just continue this process. Um, we put in, we, in the next step, we would just take the complements of sets, which are countable unions of closed sets and so on. And then we take countable unions of those, com take complements and so on. So in essen essentially, it's just a process of taking complements and countable unions. And uh, as I said, this process builds up the Borel set step by step, in contrast to taking this uh, approach from the outward, but just taking the intersection of all Borels, of all sigma algebras that contain the open sets. So it's, it's more instructive, I find, and, and, and more uh, constructive, definitely, because you can really see how you build Borel sets. So let's, let's look at an example. We take R with the topology generated by the open intervals. That's uh, the standard topology on the reals. And now we ask, is uh, the set of all rationals a Borel set? Well, if that's so, we, it must be, we must be able to obtain it in the run of this process process here. Well, and we will uh, we see actually, yeah, the, the, the answer is yes, because we can write Q as well, a countable union over all sets of this form. This is a singleton set containing only the rational number Q. And we do that for all rational numbers, but there are only countably many, so this is a countable union. Well, Furthermore, each singleton set Q is closed. Namely, it is its complement, uh, the set R, just with uh, just that single point here is missing, missing, is, is an open set. Right? It's the union of two uh, intervals of this form if we allow here minus infinity and plus infinity. Um, right? So we can write Q as a countable union of closed sets. And we saw in the previous slide, those have to be uh, in the sigma algebra of Borel sets. So Q is indeed a Borel set. And um, Q is also a good example that the third stage, um, taking countable unions of closed sets, actually uh, introduces more or more complicated set because the, uh, the uh, rational numbers are neither an open set, obviously, and but they're also not a closed set, right? Because you can, um, it doesn't contain all its limit points. You can uh, approximate any real number by a sequence of rational numbers, uh, and hence it's not closed. So now we can uh, look at the definition of the actual measure function mu. Mu is defined not on all subsets of X, uh, our measure space, or the underlying set, but only on the sigma algebra, A, on X. The reason for this is that it is impossible, in, in, in general, to define a set function that would go from uh, X here to uh, the same uh, range here or codomain that would still have these um, these properties, in particular this uh, this additivity. So this is impossible. 
in, in, in the general case. So there are some, some easy spaces where it, it is possible, but in general, it's, it's not possible. And that's why we have to restrict ourselves uh, to uh, a, a sigma algebra, which we then call the measurable sets. So not in general, not every subset of X is measurable. So what are the uh, requirements that our, our properties that our function mu uh, should have? Well, as it turns out, you can actually reduce that to two very, um, very simple conditions. The first one is, is, is rather clear, namely that the measure of the empty set should be zero. And the second one is uh, just that uh, the, these, the function mu is countably additive, meaning that if we have a countable sequence of pairwise disjoint uh, sets from our sigma algebra A, then it holds that the uh, um, measure of the union of these sets is just the sum of the individual measures. And this condition also coincides with, with our intuition. Well, if we have a, a, a region we want to assign a volume to, well, if we split this region into, into, into several parts and the parts don't overlap, then the area of the whole thing here should just be the sum of the areas of the, of the parts. Well, here I only uh, drew, of course, uh, finitely many parts of a finite partition, but it's, it's actually important here to consider a countable, uh, a countable union. So countable partition into, into countably many parts. Uh, this makes this condition much more powerful um, than just requiring that it's, uh, 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 it holds for finite uh, uh, unions here, finite pairwise disjoint unions. And as I already mentioned, from these two conditions here, from these two simple conditions, we can actually already derive a lot of properties uh, about uh, measures that we will use later. So here's a, a few types of measures that um, we will be dealing with. So uh, let's assume we have uh, x a mu, a measure space. A Borel measure just means that the underlying sigma algebra is the Borel sigma algebra, or a Borel sigma algebra. Of course, that always depends on the topology. But if we fix the topology, the Borel sigma algebra is determined too. A finite measure just means that the measure of the whole space is uh, finite. Um, that's not always the case. For instance, if you take the standard uh, Lebesgue measure on the real line, uh, then uh, x would be uh, the measure of the reals is infinite, of course. A probability measure um, just means that the measure is finite, but not only finite, but uh, it also means that um, uh, the measure of the whole space is one. And finally, a sigma finite measure is just one that's not necessarily finite, but it can be uh, written as a union of sets of finite measures. So for instance, again, the, the, the example, if we take the reals, right, uh, that can be written as the union of, um, uh, of uh, intervals of finite measures. So if we take uh, i in, in z and take the, the unions of i and uh, uh, i plus one, of this form, then uh, this each of this uh, these sets has measure one, and uh, together they give the union uh, R. And uh, an important question in measure theory is now how to construct Borel measures. Um, uh, we've seen there's a lot of Borel sets, uh, and uh, they're getting more and more complicated. So although we only have to satisfy two requirements, um, the, uh, the second one, namely the countable additivity, can be very um, hard to satisfy because it, it has to hold for all uh, 
sequences of, of dis pairwise disjoint Borel sets, and, and uh, we know we don't really know what what exactly the Borel sets are. And this is where the Kara Theodori extension theorem comes in very um, handily, handy because um, in a nutshell, it says to specify a measure on a sigma algebra, it suffices to specify it on a much simpler uh, set family, namely uh, an algebra. Uh, uh, I'm not going to um, write uh, the Carathority Theodori extension theorem out uh, formally here. I'm just indicating how, how, how it works. Well, if we have specified a countable additive countably additive set function on the algebra, then one can show using the properties of a measure uh, that uh, it extends to the sigma algebra generated by that algebra. And again, meaning uh, uh, generating uh, this, the sigma algebra generated by the algebra just means it's the smallest sigma algebra containing that algebra. So um, just like in the case of building up the Borel sets, you would now, uh, from the open sets, you would uh, start with the sets in the algebra and start um, closing them under complements and countable unions. And in that process, you will construct all the uh, uh, sets in the sigma algebra, smallest sigma algebra uh, containing uh, this uh, algebra here. So this way, we only have to specify our set function actually on an algebra, and then this measure extends to the sigma algebra generated, and the extension is even unique. So there's only one way to extend this, if this underlying measure uh, mu that we've specified is sigma finite, which will be uh, the case most of the time for us. So what exactly is an algebra? Um, well, an algebra is a family R of subsets of X such that those three conditions uh, hold. The first one is uh, just that the empty set is an R again. And the second one um, um, down here uh, uh, says that uh, it's closed under uh, complements. So R is closed under complements. So those, are, those two conditions here are actually the same. As for uh, sigma algebras, the difference is actually in this condition here, saying that an algebra does not have to be closed under countable unions, but only under finite unions. And that makes a big difference. As we will see, um, algebras are often much easier to handle than, than uh, sigma algebras. So the goal is now um, we want to specify a Borel measures on a sequence space A to the N. And um, uh, in order to use the Kara Theodori theorem, um, the question is, can we find a nice algebra? So nice in the sense that it's easily, it's, it's, uh, we can handle it easily mm, in a sequence space that generates the Borel sets in our sequence space with the underlying uh, topology given by the cylinder sets. And uh, we will uh, approach this question in the next lecture.